I think I filmed too much of the process on this one, so I really had to cut things down. We're gonna keep this one fairly quick, just because I don't think pencil crowns is the right medium to do a long process video for. The decision to use pencil crayons or colored pencils, we use pencil crayons in Canada, I don't know why. This was semi-inspired by a coworker because we were talking about art materials and she was saying that pencil crayons were her favorite. And that's an opinion. It is the wrong opinion, but it is an opinion. <laughs> Subscribe for more hot takes on art. But based on how I like to do art, I wouldn't say that this is necessarily my favorite, just on how the process kind of just is. So when I was in elementary school, that's when I mainly used pencil crayons. I mean, we didn't exactly have a lot of choice, right? When you're a child, you've got crayons, markers, and pencil crayons. It's not like you're bringing oil pastels in your pencil case or some fancy shit like that. So I am kind of familiar with the medium, but I'm no expert, let's say. I know enough about pencil crayons that like burnishing is a thing and I had to watch a tutorial just to learn that word. That's about all I learned from the tutorial only because I just have the shortest attention span and I can't like watch someone show me how to do something. I kind of just have to figure it out for myself. But back to the point of burnishing real quick. So when we were in school we found out the secret to getting like that creamy finish was to use the white pencil crayon to sort of fill in all the little white gaps of paper showing through. So the white pencil crayon was coveted. It was like a big deal if you had more than one. Anyway, let's get on to why this medium isn't necessarily my favorite or why it doesn't jive with how I like to create art. So first thing is that it's actually fairly permanent once you've committed, once you've really pressed down hard with your pencil. There's not much you can really do to get rid of that. You can't paint over it, you can't erase it at that point. So once, you're, once you've committed to something, you're pretty locked in and I, I don't like that. I like the ability to sort of be a bit more malleable and to go back and fix mistakes. Even with something like inking, which you would think is pretty permanent, you can still use white ink or something to cover up mistakes. Number two is that it takes so long. You're really working with just the tip of a pencil to fill in space and it's not like you can get a fatter pencil, like you can get a fatter paintbrush, you know what I mean? And third, and I think my final point is that it's hard to know if you're getting the right color blend until the very end, until you've like actually burnished the thing. Unless you like this rough texture, I'm not a big fan of it. I like that really solid, opaque kind of finish. To make this a bit more of an enjoyable experience for myself, I've gone to my faceted hair style or style of drawing hair where things are kind of fragmented into these little sections that make it easier to, I don't know, get some coloring in. My brain has an easier time with like filling in smaller spaces than it does with having to fill in a larger space like her cheek or something. This has also allowed me to get into the unreality colors of it all, where I'm using colors that aren't there in the reference photo. This is just my way of doing it with pencil crayons, I guess. It's also a way of injecting a bit of my style into something that can be fairly representational and, in my opinion, just a little boring. So there we go. Here's a portrait of Gamora from Guardians of the Galaxy using my least favorite material so far. If you want to see a portrait done using my favorite materials, click on this video here where I do a portrait of Nebula, Gamora's sister using acrylics. Well, I started using gouache and then I hated that and so I started using acrylics instead and it got way better.